he touched on the gospel and he was given um, a, really a salvation message. And then when the invitation was given, the Lord laid it on my heart to um, pray for serenity, honestly. And uh, I don't know that I told everybody this. Let me turn that one off. I was over here. He gave the invitation. The Lord laid on my heart to pray for serenity. I come over here. And I kneeled on the altar, and I was asking God that, that He would soften her heart in the gospel. I was asking God that He would remove every distraction, and that He would give her the strength she needed to walk the aisle and get saved. And literally, as I got up and I walked back to my seat, the pastor was asking me to grab my Bible, and she's already walking the aisle. It's amazing. It's amazing how the Lord works. It's not. It has nothing to do with me, but what I'm saying is it encouraged me. Don't don't give up. I mean, there's people on our prayer bulletin. We've been praying for salvation for years and years. Don't give up on them. Amen? Amen. Alright, tonight if you'll take your Bible with me, we're going to turn over to 1 John chapter number 1. 1 John chapter number 1. If, you, if you've taken time to look at our yearly calendar that we have this month, the month of May, is pastors put it down, is Fellowship Month. And that's the idea or the theme that we want to go after tonight is fellowship. So we're going to be in 1 John chapter number 1. When you find your place there, if you'll say amen, I know we're all on the same page. Amen. All right, let's read the first few verses here and then we'll get started. First John chapter number 1, verse 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands uh, have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and declared we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. <clears throat> I want us to take a notice there in verse number 3 where it talks about fellowship. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. You know, if you think about it, um, it, it, when it really comes down to it, no one wants to be alone. I mean, people say that, say that sometimes, but I, I really believe that when it comes down to it, no one wants to be alone. Why is that? Why do you think that is? Uh, I mean, I think God has given us a, a desire to be with other people. You know, so where do you think that comes from? With Hold your place here in 1 John. Turn over with me to Genesis chapter number 2. The very front of your Bible, Genesis chapter number 2. See, when God was creating, He was creating all things. Genesis chapter number 2, and verse 18 says, And the Lord God said, is, this is after God made uh, Adam, right? And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. So it was God's design that man should not be by himself. He should not be alone. And, and you know, that's, that's that if you really think about it, no one truly wants to be alone. We all want to be in fellowship with someone. And you know, when God created uh, the, the, the garden and He put Adam in there and He created a helpmeet for him, really, uh, he, he gave him someone there to be with, someone to fellowship with, but not just to fellowship with. His purpose of building the garden was a place that He had to go to fellowship with them. He wanted to walk with them during the cool of the day. If you remember that from reading in the book of Genesis, the Lord desired a fellowship with His people. Are you all with me tonight? He desired a fellowship with His people. And so this is where this desire of a fellowship should come from. And so tonight we want to take a look at this idea of fellowship and think about this fellowship with God. <clears throat> verse 1 says that, and we're back in 1 John. Uh, verse 1 says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and, and our hands have handled of the Word of life. And notice here that the Word is capitalized here, the capital W. They're talking about who here? Jesus. They're talking about Jesus. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning, right? So the Word in John chapter 1 was talking about Jesus. The Word in John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 1 is also talking about Jesus. And John says here that, that He was from the beginning. In other words, He wasn't created. He is the Creator. He's always existed. He wasn't uh, here when He was born in Bethlehem. No, He, was, he has always had been. This is just the time that He was... Um, incarnate in Bethlehem. So we see that He was from the beginning 
he said, which we have heard. He's literally heard him speak, which we have seen with our eyes. We've literally seen him. And then he says, we have looked upon. It's interesting. He said, I've seen and then I looked upon. I, I believe he means that he studied him. He'd seen him and then he studied him. He's literally studying him. And then he says, our hands have handled of the word of the life, literally touching him. Some people said that, that Jesus was some kind of phantom. You know, he was, you could see him, but he wasn't really here. And that's, and that's not the truth at all. He was all God and all man all at the same time. He was here in the flesh, right? And so God, uh, or Jesus, he's, he's here. And, and John says, we've witnessed him, I've handled him, I've studied him. And, and then it says, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. And so here's John, he's saying, this is uh, Jesus, he is the word of life, he is the living God, I have seen him, and, and he said, this is, what, and, and I'm declaring it unto you, I am telling you, verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. I want to stop right there for a minute. You know, we talk about personal evangelism. We're talking about knocking on doors. We're talking about soul winning. Everybody says, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. What if I run into an atheist? Then they don't believe in God. God's never asked us to argue with anybody and prove ourselves right. If you notice what, what John's doing here, he is telling his story about Jesus. I've handled him. I've, I've, I've seen him. I've, I've had my hands on him. I've studied him. I've watched him. I've heard him speak. He's literally telling his story with Jesus. So when you share your testimony, which is the strongest thing that you have to, to see someone get saved other outside of the Word of God, is your testimony, is, is how Jesus has affected your life, how he's changed your life. It is the the strongest tool you have in your arsenal to see other people saved and going to heaven one day. Are y'all with me tonight? It is your testimony of how God has dealt with you and what He's done in your life. You know, many times when we have fellowship meals and things like that, what do we talk about? You know, He talks about here in verse 3 about our fellowship together. His desire was there, fellowship with us, that you fellowship with us. You know, their fellowship or what he's fellowshipping with is his story of Jesus, how Jesus, what Jesus has done in his life. And so, you know, when you fellowship with other believers, when you fellowship with other people, it ought to be you sharing what God's doing in your life. And it doesn't mean you've got to tell them your testimony every time you see them about how you got saved. But how did God uh, uh, help you in your life this week? How did he help you today? How many times do we come together as Christians and we don't do that? We talk about everything else. Are we having true fellowship one with another? Are we having our fellowship with others and with God? Are y'all with me tonight? Let's finish, let's finish reading that verse. He says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, are y'all following me tonight? So, we're talking about uh, horizontal fellowship, and we're talking about vertical fellowship. Here's what I know about that. Our, our horizontal fellowship be between man and man, right, is going to be better if our vertical fellowship between God and man is right. Are y'all with me? Yeah, really, if, if we're fellowshipping with the Lord like we should be fellowshipping with the Lord, our fellowship with other believers is going to be much sweeter. Besides, what would you? What else would you fellowship on if you wasn't in fellowship with the Lord? Something bad. Amen. That's right. So here, what's he say here in verse four? He said, "Then these things write we unto you that your joy may be full." Your joy may be full. Well, how are you going to get this fullness of joy? You don't have to turn there. I'm going to flip over real quick. i got it marked here. Psalm 16, uh, David writes this in verse 11. He says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. So how is your joy going to be full? Well, your joy is going to be full if you have proper fellowship with the Father. And if you truly have proper fellowship with the Father, you're going to have proper fellowship with His people too. Are you all with me? That's how you're going to have fullness of joy. Say, so what is joy? Joy is is something that you can have no matter what you're going through. Joy is something you can have even when you get a, a, a bad report at the doctor's office. Joy is something you can have even when you get laid off from your job. Joy is something you can have even when the times are tough and there's not enough money. There's more bills than there is month. You understand what I'm saying? Joy is something you can have no matter what the circumstances are. Happiness is something you can have because of happenings. Okay, you know, I, somebody give you a cake today. That'll make you happy, right? 
Are y'all following with me? That is because of a happening. But joy is from the Lord. You can have joy no matter what your situation is if your fellowship is right with the Lord. Amen? <clears throat> so there's conditions for these fellowships. <clears throat> There's conditions for these fellowships. Verse number 5, he says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. So this is the message which we've heard of him, and I'm telling you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. <clears throat> John here says that God is light, in Him there is no darkness. In 1 John he says, um, he says something very similar about God being light, that Jesus is the light. And, in, and, and the darkness couldn't overtake Him. It's like this, if you turn off every light in here, if, it was, if you could make it completely dark, and you turned on a flashlight, it would not be dark anymore. Right? The, the light would overtake the dark. Are y'all with me? They, they can't occupy the same place. They're, they're, they're completely opposite from one another. He said that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And so I was asking a question here a minute ago about what fellowship, what can we fellowship on if we're not fellowshipping about the Lord? 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 6 says this, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, most people take this and they apply it to a relationship. But I believe you can apply that to friendships and many other things. Don't get me wrong, we are supposed to be in the world but not of the world. We're supposed to affect them and not them affect us. It's, it, you, need to, you need to find a place where you can share the gospel with a lost and dying world without being there with them yoked up together. Are y'all following with me? But he said there's a separation here. He said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? You remember God is light and in Him there is no darkness? The two don't mix, right? So what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? You can't mix them together. You don't get light and dark make gray. That's not how this works. Either you got light or you got darkness. You can't stand in the middle. And here's the thing. If you walk in the light as He's in the light, then your sins will be open to everyone. You're, you're, you are open to uh, your sins being found out. And that's why people love darkness. Because we don't like our sins to be exposed. We don't like to be in the light. But if you walk in the light, say if you're coming to church and you're hearing preaching and the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart about something or you're, or you're reading your Bible during devotion time and you say, oh, okay. You understand what God wants you to do and you reject it. That's darkness. But if you understand what God wants you to do and you say, okay, Lord, I'll make that right. And you ask Him for forgiveness and you change. Now you're walking in the light. And though your sins will be open in the light, we ask God to forgive us and we keep walking in the light. The trouble is, most people are stuck somewhere where they, they, they last chose not to follow the Lord. So they walk with the Lord and say, I'm with you. Okay, I'll do this. Lord, you want me to do that? I'll do this. And they'll get somewhere and they'll say, ooh, I like that sin. I don't want to change that, so I'm going to go this way. I'm all, I'm all, I'm, they act as if they're in fellowship with God, but truly they turn away from it. So they're no longer, no longer walking in the light. Notice in verse 7 here, it says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Y'all see that? That's a, that's a continual thing. As you walk in the light, and you stumble and you mess up, or God shows you something. You know, here, here's, here's the thing. If you don't know it's sin yet, you kind of, I don't want to say, I, I guess I'll say it this way, you kind of get a pass. If you don't understand it's sin, that don't mean you can say, well, I didn't know, Lord, about everything. That's not how it works. But God's not going to judge you on something you truly don't understand. 
But once you understand it, you're held accountable for it. Once God showed you a truth in His Word that He didn't want you to do, once He's, He's got it settled in your heart that He doesn't no longer want you to do this one thing or that one thing, whatever it is, and you continue to live in that sin, then, then you're held accountable for that. But if you correct it and you continue to walk in the light, it says the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. His sacrifice cleanses us from that sin. And, and, and there's more to go along with that here in the next few verses. I don't know that we'll have time to deal with those tonight. But I want us to understand this, that if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Here's the thing, as you walk in the light you have nothing to hide. You're in fellowship with other believers. It's hard to be in fellowship with other believers that are walking in the light and living in darkness. The two don't mix. The same thing with the Lord. If we're walking in darkness, we break fellowship with God. It doesn't mean you lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. If you're truly saved, you're sealed into the day of redemption. God, God, God has said that, that, that He holds you in His hand. He said that he's, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Once you get saved and you have the Holy Spirit in, well, as soon as you get saved, you get that one. You, as soon as you get saved, that's the down payment. All right? You are saved. You don't lose that. But you can lose your fellowship. It's possible to be a Christian walking in darkness. It's possible. And guess what? It's very real. It happens a lot. You say, how come, how come the gospel isn't, is, isn't spreading as fast here as it is in other parts of the world? Because we have Christians that live carnally, or Christians that live fleshly, or Christians that are walking in darkness. That's not how God wants us to be. You remember when God created the garden? He wanted to have fellowship with His people. God wants to have fellowship with you. Amen? Amen. That's, that's His design. That's His will for your life, that you walk in the light as He is in the light. Amen? It's about five after. we got to quit. Um, I should be back with you here in a couple weeks, so maybe we can expound on this a little bit more. But here's the, here's the point tonight. God wants fellowship with you. God wants you to walk in the light. Because there's no other way that He can have fellowship with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, Brother William, will you close this in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this message. We thank you for loving us, caring for us, providing for us. We pray, dear Lord, that you forgive us when we get back short. And we look to you, the God that's addressed with wisdom, dear Lord. We just thank you for allowing us to be here tonight, dear Lord. And we pray for safe traveling mercies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be in the stand behind the pulpit. We pray for all your blessings upon us. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.